Good morning, good morning, good morning. A hot day today. A hot week ahead. I'm going to drive down to Lyme Regis this weekend to uh, stay in my brother-in-law's hotel. Apparently there's something going on in Lyme Regis. But then there's, there's something going on everywhere, basically. They've got the French are in sandwich deal. The, uh, there's a steam fair in Barham. There's the Preston School Fate, which is the only sort of, sort of the de facto fate in the area, which has got to be known as the famous Preston School Fate. That's how they advertise themselves now. Up and down the British Isles, we're organising outdoor events in the brief period that we have to do so. So it's those, you know, these are sort of the days where you think, oh, well, I used to work by the seaside and it was lovely. Although some years I never actually went to the seaside, I, I was sort of. I was literally like 200 yards away and I used to sit I used to sit there lunchtime doing paperwork, you know. I know it's tempting to uh, work to the max, but I know I have been guilty of that, I'm sure. I probably still am. But uh, dentistry is a job where you don't, uh, you know, you can, if you can, if you can accept a reduction in your standard of living, you can still, you know, you can work less than most people, I would say, and, ha and but in enjoy a similar standard of living. You know, if you've only got to find your mortgage, haven't you, and your rates and a few hundred quid a week for food. My surgery is, um, being a new surgery, the. Uh, Financially, it's not very remunerative, I would say. I think you're supposed to, the average, isn't it, NHS and private take home pay before tax is supposed to be about 130,000 a year. And uh, I'm not earning anything, not even, a, not even a sizable fraction of that. But, you know, it gives me something to do in the day. And uh, it's, how can I put it? You know, I mean, I'm employing, I'm, I'm giving quite a few people jobs, and I think doing quite a bit of good in the medical uh, side of things. I had a patient in recently. Had an absolutely typical. Came in with a bag of dentures, uh, mainly uh, acrylic, partial uppers, and and the two bridges that she'd had, which had failed before she'd needed the dentures, and the crowns that had snapped off at the gum level because uh, the teeth were now overloaded and uh, oh she had a she had a litany a litany of problems clicking jaw uh, on uh, long-term chemotherapy following a recent operation Felt that her face had changed shape, loss of muscle tone, loss of, loss of, I don't know, loss of life, you know, loss of youth, <laughs> loss of youth, that was her problem, and uh, felt that she needed to see a consultant, but it was too late, and large and and what you know what's slightly more worrying a long list of things that her previous dentist had done wrong which had caused problems um, so it's very difficult to know what to do with a patient like that you know she got uh, they, they'd uh, she had a quite a, a good a well root, root treated upper left three which had been uh, stopped up with amalgam a root level presumably to preserve the bone so they've done that right, but then, then they made these absolute rubbish plastic dentures over the top, you know, which she said were too tight and blamed on the loss of another tooth. So 
so she thought about going abroad to have her teeth done. She was so desperate, you know, she was, she needed listening to, so I listened to her for half an hour. And then there's, then, then you've got the problem of what to do about it, haven't you? I mean, it's so tempting just to say, well, you know, I don't think I can help. And you don't have to say that in a sort of a nasty way. You can say, no, you know, you obviously need specialists. You're right, you need to see a consultant. You're a specialist case. But, you know, I'm sorry, I don't think I can come up with a, a solution for you. Or, you know, but then you'd have to, well, then what do you do? You can't, there are no specialist restorative consultants in anywhere near me. I can't, uh, she's not going to go up to King's or somewhere, see Martin Kelleher or whatever the arrangement is these days. You know, I am the specialist rest <laughs> I am. I am not a specialist. If you're from the GDC, I am not a specialist. I am just the most special restorative dentist in the area. <laughs> I just happen to have more time, more money and more materials, you know, more more uh, better quality materials and better quality of labs at my disposal and uh, well, uh, to use, you know, and I use them. I mean, they're at everybody's disposal. I just happen to use them, whereas strangely some other dentists don't. So anyway, I've uh, also, you know, again, like, like my guy, the contract killer guy who wouldn't take a goodie bag, the first time he saw me, but then the second time he sort of thawed a bit and actually at least did take a goodie bag on that occasion. She's another strange one, you know, where I you know, stained her teeth up and said, right, let's have a look and see how you're doing with the brushing. Oh no, I can't look, I can't look. It's all, it's too terrible, I don't want to look. I don't know, no, you can't make me look. You know, I'm like, okay, I don't mind. I mean, I'll have a look. But what do you do with a patient who He's sort of disassociated themselves from their teeth to the extent that they won't even look in their mouth. I mean, what cooperation can you expect from that patient? What, you know, how to what extent are they going to be involved in <laughs> in their treatment and their treatment plan if they can't even bring themselves to think about their teeth or look at their teeth? And what chances of success have you got? if your treatment plan, you know, you, you could go the other way. I mean, basically what I've done is I've, I've done what I would have done. I've treated her as a technical problem and given her a technical solution, which is two post crowns, uh, a posterior crown and, uh, you know, all with parallel, parallel sides and a cobalt chrome upper. Because I think from a clinical point of view, that's the solution that she needs. She doesn't need any more plastic dentures. But uh, I can see why in the past every dentist has taken one probably rather quick look at her and thought, right, I'm not, you know, this is not, it's, it's all or nothing with her, you know? And so they've all decided nothing. They've all decided I'll just make her another set of plastic dentures that she might like. And of course, you know, they, the problem with making cheap plastic dentures is that they are, you know, for, for every 10 you make, one will be an absolute disaster. Eight will, one will fit as perfectly as a, the best private set, and eight will just be varying degrees of disaster, you know, will just be barely adequate. And so, because you have the occasional patient who said, oh, I had, you know, this denture made, it's been brilliant, People live in hope that, that the one that they get made might be brilliant. Just they might get lucky, you know. And uh, it doesn't really work like that. Chances are almost certain that you'll get a mediocre one, and you may be unlucky enough to get the one that is totally unwearable from day one. But the solution is just to make another one. If, if you've made one and got paid for it, and the patient doesn't always more likely another dentist has made one and the patient doesn't get on with it then you just make them another one you know and then 
nobody ever gets to ten, but presumably after you've had three or four made, you get one that, that works. So, anyway, she literally had all these dentures out in her lap, all her bridge work out in her lap and everything. So, the alternative, as I say, would be to just say, look, you know, your problems are insurmountable. Uh, what you need is something that is perhaps, you know, just see if we can make you a, an upper partial acrylic denture that you can wear. Perhaps put some clasps on it or something, which none of the others seem to have had. And, uh, and perhaps take out where your tooth, your front tooth has snapped off, perhaps take that out. And possibly even take out the canine on the top left. And possibly even take out the upper left seven at the back, which is a big old fractured amalgam. And just make you like a larger partial upper acrylic and just, you just have to accept that you're in your 70s and you're gonna, you know, wear dentures. But this woman, she's got multiple multiple bridges, you know, she's got two long bridges in her lower jaw, so she's not a stranger to advanced conservation. I don't know where she's got those from. They may relate to the period when that sort of advanced conservation was remunerative and quite widely carried out on the NHS. And uh, but, but either way, I mean, she's managed to tolerate some advanced restorative work, so that gives you some, you know, that's a point in her favour in a way, in that she's not may not be so much of a clinical nightmare but how can you end up <laughs> it took me it took me probably 45 minutes to have a chat with her get to the bottom of her as a person um, take the x-rays that she needed of the roots she wouldn't commit I said to her you know what are you leaning towards perhaps more of a technical solution or a just a quick cheap and cheerful set of dentures perhaps that would stay in a bit better and she wouldn't say so I did what do you do then I mean I just said to her okay I'll type you know and I quoted her it took me another 45 minutes to type up her quote because we do pictures of the teeth and we put the pictures in the quote etc etc and this is all free I mean our first checkup is entirely free of charge the digital x-rays are free of charge uh, all the hygiene instruction, we give them, you know, all the toothbrush and everything, we give it all free of charge. So, I don't know, but uh, it's very, there's a lot of uh, tangibility in it. Remember what I was talking about, service sector marketing. It's all about tangibility. You know, the, um, the, uh, the, the uh, workflow with goods, yeah, they're manufactured in advance then they're sold and then they're used so if you use a washing machine you know you've got the washing machine it's manufactured the factories put in the curries in curries it's then sold the patient takes it home they plug it in and then they use it okay so that's the workflow for goods you know Man uh, manufacture sale use services are uh, completely different they're sold in advance so you pay you pay your money up front before you've received it <laughs> you uh, and then the service is usually uh, delivered at the same time as it's consumed. So, uh, take a cinema, a trip to the cinema for example. You buy your ticket at the box office. You haven't seen the film, <laughs> so you don't know what you're paying for. Could be good, could be rubbish. You, uh, And you then go in and they produce the film and you watch it simultaneously and uh, you know you're so so you have to say to yourself well what you know how do you know it's going to be a good film so perhaps you've seen the trailer perhaps your friends have mentioned it perhaps you've seen a review in the newspaper you're sort of you know you're quite you're like you know uh, what's it <laughs> with the goods with your washing machine you can go into curries can't you you can I mean you can't wash anything in it but I mean at least you can poke it and open the door and press the knobs and ask the salesman questions about it and, and then walk out without buying it if you don't think it's what you want, you know. That's why trade shows uh, persist. That's why the BDI 
BDI, the BDI people are still doing the trade shows. Because people with goods, you need to poke it before you, you buy it. Showcase is full of pokers. But with services like dentistry, it's consumed and produced at the same time. You know, you do the filling, the patient's having the filling at the same time. So, it's all about tangibility. People need to poke your service. And they can't have it, you know, they can't, let's say technically, you could walk into a cinema, couldn't you, and say, right, okay, I'm going to pay for this film. I'll watch it, but if I don't like it, I'm going to come back and get my money back. And I don't know, most people don't do that, you know. I mean, I don't know whether if you did try it, a cinema manager might say, well, all right, then you didn't like it, get your money back, that's fine. But uh, the problem is the service has been produced, hasn't it? You can't say to a patient, I'll do the crown on it, or do a root treatment if you don't like it, I'll give you money back. Because it's been, cons you know, it's been consumed, it's been unwrapped. <laughs> The, uh, the washing machine, if you take the washing machine back because you don't like it, you know, or wash, not a washing machine, but perhaps something from Marks and Spencer's or something, you try it, you don't like it, you take it back. It hasn't been consumed. In fact, they go to great lengths to make sure it hasn't been consumed because they do ask you to return it in its original packing, possibly, you know, and not, the receipt is more to do with the uh, audit trail, but they want to make sure that they can resell it. Or that you, at least you haven't got any beneficial ownership you know you haven't got any use out of it so you give them back the goods they give you back the money we can't do that with a service so what do you do it's all about tangibility what you do is you you say to the patient this is what I'm proposing to do and you explain it to them you explain to them what the benefits are you explain to them what the consequences of having nothing are and you take lots of pictures and you give them those pictures, you print them out, you put them in your quote, you say, look, um, you have got a crack filling. Please blow, please find picture of filling with crack. <laughs> oh yes, I can see the crack. Okay, that's it. That's all you need to do. Just don't say, you know, don't think of how you feel when you go in the garage and the bloke says, oh yeah, you need a new clutch. Really? I mean, you know, they've got a financial incentive, haven't they? They're going to get paid, aren't they, to replace your clutch. Of course they're going to say you need a new clutch. They'll probably say you need a new car. It's in their interest to say that. You're not going to trust them. Not that you don't think they're trustworthy, but there, there's a conflict, isn't there? There's a blatant conflict of interest there between their desire to make money and your desire to have impartial advice. So by taking pictures and putting them in your quotes, you're... You are, you're saying to the patient, I am eliminating my conflict of interest in giving you this advice. You can see this advice is unbiased and not at all guided by my, my desire to earn money from carrying out this repair. Because it is, you know, I'm not, I am not inventing or exaggerating this repair. This is the problem, you can see it yourself. You can make your own valid judgments about whether or not the tooth is cracked whether or not it needs to be repaired. The question then becomes, do, do they ask me to repair it or do they just ask someone else to repair it? Someone needs to repair it and 100 times out of 100, they're gonna ask the person who, the honest person who drew it to their attention and made sure that they understood what the problem was, who just happens to be sitting next to them at the time. So, tangibility is a marvelous thing in dentistry and once you get the hang of it, You'll get a whiteboard set up and so you can draw diagrams for people and you've got bits of paper everywhere and pens. Never really ever done a root treatment without drawing a picture of the root of the tooth and you know, people don't understand. You think, you assume, you say, oh, you're going to need a root treatment. Most people, you might as well say you're going to need a, you know, shilling and ince. They don't know what a root treatment is. People don't know teeth are hollow. They don't know they can get infection inside teeth. And uh, you have to you have to have the old metaphors handy, you know. But sometimes the best metaphors come from the patients. I always used to say uh, with the root treatment, you know, we need to. It's hollow. There's infection inside. It's going up inside the roots. It eventually it'll come out in your face, make your face swell up. We need to clean out the inside of the tooth. 
fill it up with antiseptic polyfiller. Oh, how do you do that? Well, we stick a load of um, um, pipe cleaners up it, clean it out, and then fill it up with antiseptic polyfiller. One bloke said to me, I know. He said, oh yeah, a friend of mine had that done. He said, like, you give the tooth a good rodding. A good rodding, he said. <laughs> Just like a drain, a drain analogy, I thought. I don't, not probably one of my favorite analogies, drains, but yeah, that's that. I said, yeah, that's it, yeah, that's exactly what we do. We get our rods out and we go up the drain, <laughs> we go up the roots, and then, uh, then we fill it all up. <laughs> He said, oh, well, like, you know, he's all like, oh, well, why didn't you say so? Um, yeah, intro cameras, brilliant. Not, not in, it's difficult to show people in real time with an intro camera. Um, you know, because you're like, you know, you're talking to them and they've got this camera in their mouth and they're going, ah, 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 ah. So what I do is I take the pictures and then you, you store them and then you can later you can pull them up on the TV monitor or or better still um, uh, print them out or better even still pull them up on the monitor and print them out so you can show them the pictures in the surgery and then when they go through to reception you just give them a piece of paper and then say there we are there's the pictures I just took you know take them home stick them on the fridge and and a lot of them you know, so all uh, but a lot of them, but they all take them. You know, they'll all take them. Whether they just, some of them probably found straight away. But. So uh, today's word is tangibility. Intraoral cameras, whiteboards, and analogies like rodding that people can understand. Okay, now I understand. It's time to go to work. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a nice day. Bye.